Her funeral will take place at Westminster Abbey tomorrow, but for many of us, Queen Elizabeth's death still feels surreal. After such long service, not having her as the head of the royal family will surely take some getting used to. It begins with retraining our brains. Charles is now a king, not a prince, something many a commentator has fumbled these past few days. For the new monarch, juggling immense private grief one moment, essential public duty the next, has been challenging. But by his side all the way has been his most trusted and closest confidant, King Charles's wife, now Queen Consort, Camilla. If it wasn't for her wide-brimmed black hat... What is it? Is it 13, 12? 13, sir. Oh, God, in the wrong day. You might have been able to detect the slightest hint of an eye roll from the Queen Consort, as her 73-year-old husband, the King, threw a tantrum over a leaky pen. Oh, God, I hate it. A picture of cool composure, it's highly likely Camilla has seen it all before. And has learned the best way to deal with a royal meltdown is to simply get on with the job at hand. Of course, very few people would judge King Charles for his outburst. It has, after all, been an extraordinary week and a half. He's lost his beloved mother, taken on the most high-profile job on earth and carried the collective grief of a nation on his shoulders. As we've seen, our new king isn't superhuman, but having his super-patient consort by his side has done wonders for his demeanour. She's fun. I mean, I call her a closet Aussie or a closet Oz because that's what Australian women are like. You know, we're earthy, we're grounded, we mm. are each other's human wonder bras, uplifting, supportive, and Camilla is definitely a human wonder bra. From the most hated woman in the world to the Queen of England, Camilla's transformation is nothing short of astonishing. So much so, she's now playing a pivotal role in steering the monarchy into a new era. Did you get the sense that she is ready to step into this very demanding new role? I suspect she finds it terrifying in the sense that um, it's a huge thing to do. It's a huge job to suddenly become the Queen Consort, the partner of the head of state of more than one country. As the whole world knows, after 70 years of waiting, last Thursday King Charles's destiny was realised following the Queen's death. But at the same time, so was Camilla's. Half a century since the day she first met Charles, the new Queen Consort emerged with the King and walked straight into a very new life. I'm sure she has all sorts of insecurities, but she also has a fundamental self-confidence. I mean, she knows that her husband loves her, that she knows that despite public uh, disapproval in the past, she doesn't feel that she is deeply at fault in any fundamental way. Life happens. And, you know, she's a good egg. See you soon. She is a fascinating figure. She was before, but now she's central. Um, Most commoners can only guess or so dream point, what saying, really you know, goes on behind palace walls. Uh, but not filmmaker Michael Waldman. Uh, it, it was fascinating to do, but it's now all the more pertinent. And it makes me think, as I'm watching her, what's going through her mind. And, um... A few months ago, he was granted a special privilege, unprecedented access to the then Queen-in-waiting for his documentary, Camilla's Country Life. You never know what's going to happen next. Following her as she guest edited a British magazine. Pretty good. That'll do. Thank you very much. Had a taste of cider, a taste of vodka, a taste of... Just tired. I'm still standing in the glad tears. <laughs> they didn't... They didn't... Uh, they didn't felt me. 
she is authentically um, herself, and that's really why it's been a success. And it's a really interesting thing to watch her being herself and not changing much when you go from the sort of semi-private side of things, which I saw, to the more public-facing. So she's, she's a natural. She has a way of putting people at ease. Without question, absolutely. Michael believes the Queen Consort sees her new job as a simple one. Her role, both publicly and privately, is to support her husband, the King. And it's obvious from the film, Charles wants Camilla around as much as possible. It very is the match what you're wearing. <laughs> and I felt absolutely watching that, that they get on incredibly well. They are mutually supportive of each other. Book recommendations. I got the sense also that they, they didn't have to be polite to each other. She, at some point, something happened where she thought he was ridiculous and so was dis she was dismissive in, in an affectionate way. It was a very little, I intriguing little insight. So their natural dynamic in that moment, even in front of the cameras, was very much that they were a team. Completely, a team in, in, in work and in life. In reality, Charles and Camilla have been a team in one way or another since they first met in 1970. But back then, she was deemed unsuitable for the young Prince of Wales, and both went on to marry other people. Later, when their ongoing affair was revealed, she was blamed for the bust-up of Charles's marriage to Diana. It was a royal scandal the public have taken a long time to get over. Well, I met her long before they were sort of out as a couple. And um, I remember even then asking her what, what it was like, because at the time she was, you know, public hate figure number one because of Diana. People would throw bread rolls at her in the supermarket. Australian author Cathy Lett forged a friendship with Camilla in London more than two decades ago, at the height of the hatred against her. The media attacks and even the disdain of the public was, was quite brutal. So the fact that she survived that with her humour intact and that she has kind of made this now trajectory to um, a, a beloved figure by the British public, is a great testament to her strength of character because I would have buckled. I would have been curled up like a bit of limp lettuce in the corner of the room, you know, sobbing into a packet of Tim Tams. So, you know, I, I, I'm in awe of her that she could survive all of that with such um, style, grace and aplomb. Has Camilla changed or is it our perception of her that's changed? I would say it's definitely our perception of her that's changed because people have got to see what I've always seen in her, her wit, her warmth, her wisdom. And it's, it's lovely that the public have come to see that side of her eventually. The way Cathy Lett tells it, Camilla has won over the public by being an unroyal royal, a woman with few airs and graces. And she's funny, you know, she's deliciously self-deprecating. I remember I was going to a, an event at Clarence House once and I'd, I'd, I'd hurt my leg jogging and I was on a crutch. And as I walked in, she greeted me warmly and she said, oh, Cathy, darling, what's happened to you? And I thought, oh, it's too mundane to talk about a jogging accident. So I said, oh, I, I fell off my toy board. <laughs> you know, and all around her, you could see the, the nostril flared flunkies kind of gasping that I was talking to the... How the, will she react? Yeah, to the future queen like that. And she just burst out laughing. There's a really funny photo of her just really cracking up. It's just the beginning of King Charles's reign. But having watched Camilla closely, Michael Waldman believes the crown will sit comfortably on the Queen Consort's head. In a way, for the magic of monarchy to work, you need both the sort of air and character of someone who is going to look as if they're appropriate to that, that gilded world, but also we need to feel there's a human being there. And I think in Camilla, without question, she's an authentic, natural, funny, uh, delightful woman. She's also unfussy, which may be the biggest compliment anyone can pay her. Kathy Lett says her common touch makes her the perfect partner for our new king and will long endear her not only to the people of the United Kingdom, 
but to everyone around the Commonwealth as well. Now that Camilla is the Queen Consort, I hope she doesn't feel the need to dip herself in disinfectant and change in any way. Um, I hope she keeps her sense of humour. I'm sure she will. And most of all, I hope she lets me continue to be, you know, court jester. Keep her grounded. <laughs> yes, that's right. Tug her as she floats off into the air, tug her back to earth and say, don't forget, you're just a mere mortal like us. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.